Okay, I know we did this slide in class, but I'm gonna go ahead and start from scratch rather than picking it up halfway. When we're looking at this question, we wanna see that we have light at a particular wavelength. And we're trying to get from that wavelength frequency and energy. That sets us up to use this set of equations. This set of equations lets us convert between energy, frequency, and wavelength. Something we have to remember though is our units. Frequency is always in hertz or one over second. Our speed of light is always in meters per second. That means if we want everything to cancel correctly, lambda needs to be in meters. The same is true when we're talking about the other equations, but I'll let you work that out for yourself. So we need to take nanometers and bring it into meters for both cases. We can start with doing this by seeing that we have nanometers on top. So to get rid of this, we need to cancel it by putting nanometers in the bottom. And then there's our two different methods for going about doing the solving. And you can pick your favorite way. I'm showing both here. If you prefer the method of putting lots of the small thing in the big thing, then you would need to take and put 10 to the ninth nanometers in one meter. However, if you like instead of using the way where you just take the value off the table, you're going to remember that the value on the table, which for nanometers is 10 to the negative ninth, always goes to the base unit or the unit without any prefix on it. In this case, the meters. But either way, you get 7.21 times 10 to the negative seventh. From here, we can pick our equation. For the first part, we're finding the frequency from the wavelength. So we're going to use our frequency to wavelength. Conveniently, it's already in the form that we need. We can fill in our values. And now this is a good time to also notice that our units cancel out. So we've done that correctly. If you forgot to do the 720 nanometer conversion, when you did this, you would have nanometers trying to cancel out with meters and you could see that you needed to convert that and it would catch your mistake for you. So overall, we're, le we're left with one over seconds, which is what we need to do in order to have frequency. Notice that if you had had one, or if you had had seconds, that wouldn't be correct because seconds and one over seconds are not the same thing. And if that's confusing, think about it this way. If you were to take the number four and you were to take the number one over four, those would not be equal to each other. Similarly, seconds is not equal to one over seconds. They're very different. Then they're the inverse of each other. All right, let's move on. So now we want to find the energy of the same light. So we're finding the energy from the wavelength. So we're going to use this equation. This equation also requires us to convert into meters because again, it has the speed of light, which is meters per second. So we need to cancel that meters. However, we already did this. So I'm just going to use our values from above. We fill in Planck's constant, remembering our units on Planck's constant is joules times seconds. We fill in our speed of light and we fill in our wavelength. We should double check that our units cancel because that'll check and see if we've made any mistakes. But they all cancel and this leaves us with joules and joules is a unit of energy. Now something to note, and I know I mentioned this when we were doing it before, but it's come up in office hours quite a bit. Remember that these equations are all for one photon. So when you're in your 1A classes and you're doing this for many photons, you need to adjust for that. This is just for one photon. And if it helps, you can even think of writing the unit of energy in joules per photon, if that helps. Now let's talk about this problem. I know we did this in class as well, but I feel like it was a little bit rushed, so I wanna do it again. This is a problem where we have meters squared, but our original units are in centimeters. Now there's a couple of ways to do this. I'm gonna start by the way that I actually intended you to do it. The way that I intended you to do it was to convert centimeters into meters, convert centimeters into meters, 
and then solve for the meter squared. I think as a general rule, it's easiest to convert into the units that you want to begin with, um, rather than trying to convert after you've already solved the problem. Um, this isn't entirely universal and there's exceptions to that, but for the most part, that's true. So we have centimeters on top and we need to cancel that. So we need to put centimeters on the bottom. If we're going to go ahead and use the table method, this means that we go over to the table and we see 10 to the negative two next to centimeters. That goes next to our base unit. In this case, due to space, I'm just gonna do the one method. So I went to the table, I see that this is 10 to the negative two, which means that there is one one hundredth of a meter in a centimeter, which makes sense because a centimeter is quite small compared to a meter. This gives us our value for meters. We can do the exact same thing for centimeters, which gives us our value in meters for our other dimension. Now we multiply these together. In this case, because one of the situations had one sig fig and one had two sig fig, and in all cases, we're doing multiplication, our final answer is going to have only one sig fig. Several of you tried to do this a different way, where you did your multiplication first, and you found this. Now, you can still do this conversion. Uh, we didn't talk about how to do this in class, but it actually is a skill that's good to have and a skill that's good to know. Um, we just didn't quite get there. And that is how to deal with doing conversions when you have a square. Now, let's look at what a lot of you guys did. You used the normal centimeters to meters conversion. If we do this, let's look at what this makes at our units. We only have one centimeter in the bottom. So this square actually means that you have centimeters times centimeters. So only one of those centimeters would cancel. This would leave us with a unit of centimeters times meters, which is not the unit that we want, which is meters squared. So we could do this again to cancel out the other centimeters, which would then cancel here and here, leaving us with meters squared. You could do it that way. In reality, we tend to combine these steps because that's a little bit long-winded and a little weird to follow. So how we actually tend to do these problems is we would take our 52 centimeters squared and we would square the entire conversion factor. So you're taking your one over 100 and you're squaring the entire thing, which means you square the numbers and you square the units. When we do this, our, all of our centimeters squared would cancel. We're left with meters squared and we're left with 0 0.005 meters squared. So you can use this for any type of unit where it's squared or cubed. You just have to remember to square or cube or whatever power the entire conversion factor, numbers included. All right, now things we didn't get to in class. There were some issues still going on with our atoms to grams to moles conversions. And I think this is mostly caused by flip-flopping your conversions. So let's start with this one. We have the mass of, we want to know the mass of a bunch of atoms of nitrogen. So when we start this out, we are going to start with atoms. This isn't a place where you necessarily have to have the unit, but it can get a little confusing if you try to do it without writing the unit. So I would write it. Now, we need to cancel out atoms and get to moles because you can't go straight to mass. Whenever you're going from atoms to mass, you have to go through moles first and vice versa. So we're going to go through moles. So we need to cancel out atoms. Atoms go on the bottom and moles go on top. There are many atoms in a mole. Just like when we talked about dozen, there are 12 eggs in a dozen, not 12 dozens in an egg. So when we put our atoms on the bottom, this is always going to go next to our atoms or our molecules or our photons or however, whatever thing it is that we're talking about to get us up to moles. And the one is always going to go by the moles. This means that atoms will cancel, leaving us with moles. Except we don't actually want moles. What we would like is ad or grams of nitrogen. And so we then need to convert by using the molar mass. So we can convert using the molar mass. This means that moles are gonna go on the bottom 
And molar mass is always in grams per mole. So since it's per mole, it's per one mole, while the grams gets the number from the periodic table. At which point our moles cancel, leaving us with grams. So to recap issues here, whenever you're doing these problems where you're using the conversion factor between moles and atoms or moles and molecules or moles and cars for anything, really moles and anything, it's going to be one moles while the 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd is going to go next to your atoms or photons or molecules, etc. And then when you're doing the conversion factor using the molar mass you get from the periodic table, the number is going to be the grams, while the moles are going to be one, because it's your grams in your one mole. Or in other words, if you weighed one mole of the species, how many grams would there be? Okay, I'll let you do the other version of this on your own. Let's do another one. This one was with your temperature conversions. This one messed with people a little bit in terms of how to go about doing the conversion when you also have a change in temperature. And this is going to be really important for 1B especially. So we have a balloon initially at 25 degrees Celsius. It's heated an additional 12 degrees. What is the final temperature in Kelvin? There's a lot of ways that you could do this. I think that the simplest way is to just do it in Celsius first and then convert to Kelvin. So if you do that, you have a 25 degrees Celsius balloon and it's heated 12 degrees. When you do that, you get 37. This is addition. And so we're going to talk about what place are we rounding to rather than sig figs. So we're rounding to the ones place because both of them goes to the ones place. Now we can do our conversion into Kelvin. So we'll take our 37 degrees Celsius. We'll add our 273 for our conversion, and we'll get 310 Kelvin. Notice here, we also need to round to the ones place. When we do this, though, we get a zero in the ones place. We can't leave that as 310. Because if we try to do that, that would mean that our last digit isn't significant. The easiest way to make the last digit significant is to add the period. Though, you could also do 3.10 times 10 to the second, and that would be okay too. And remember, it is not degrees Kelvin. It's just Kelvin. And with that, we will end this podcast. Hope it helped.